All right, uh, we're going to do a teardown of this ISO temp, um, three megahertz uh, oven oscillator, and uh, I don't know what says Tanut. Tanut? I don't know Motorola. Oh, it says Motorola on it. It's interesting. Anyway, I don't know who uses a three megahertz uh, primary clock, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to uh, take a look inside of one of them because this is a really, a really fat one. This one is. Uh, let's see here. This one's about uh, 40 millimeter by 60 millimeter. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty big. So I've taken a Dremel tool and I've sawed a groove all the way around it so we can we can open it up. Let's see what we see inside here. Uh, still a little bit of metal right there. Let's see if I can't get rid of that. There we go. All right, so we've got some wires here. And we got a lot of foam. So this thing's an oven, right? And so they always use a foam foam here. There's a cover here that's for adjusting it. Let me just pull that out just, for, just because we can. It sticks in there. All right, so let's see if we can't lever this thing out. Uh, Doesn't like coming out. This is that real old foam that kind of disintegrates when you touch it. All right, come on. All right, so it's obviously been gotten hot inside. junk there. There's some circuitry. So it's uh, fairly complicated. Let's see if we can't take this out. There we go. All right. So I'm always amazed these things are much more complicated than you think they are inside. Um, so this circuit might be, I'm just guessing, this circuitry might be just for temperature regulation. Okay. Just to make sure the temperature is okay. I've got a wire broken off there. But that's okay. It's the white wire. Um, and then there is this Faraday shield in there. And I think we should just start taking it apart. Um, let's go ahead and surgically remove that. fell on the floor and it was kind of too small to do the job anyway so I'll get it later <laughs> there we go oh those don't want to come out Now there's something, ah, something that's difficult to take apart. I don't know if you can see under there, but there is a transistor, a TO220 transistor mounted to this. That TO220 transistor might be the heating element. And then it's soldered to the top. So we need to, we need to desolder that in order to take this thing apart. It was only meant to go together once. out here now. Come on, let, let, let's go with that one. There 
Here we go. Oh, yeah, see? <laughs> so here's the heating element and here's the thermistor to, for the feedback loop, right? So we're gonna monitor the uh, temperature of this copper here and we're gonna heat it up with this big TO220 and measure it and then I'll use that as feedback to the top. All right, let's uh, snip that off and then let's see if we can't get inside this thing which is are those torques? Hmm. I don't know how old this thing is. Let's see. Those are either Where's my magnifying glass? I'll be able to figure this out. Ah, those are torques. Oh, okay. What year did torque screws come out? I don't remember. All right. Now, does this come apart? Okay, that little end came off. All right, and inside is a PC board that we can pull out. Ah, and there is more stuff. So let's move it over to the bench. Okay, so this is the top with the heating element and the thermistor. So this is the oven. And then this little thing here is just the oven controller. And then, it went to this thing, which is also making thermal contact to this uh, oven. So it's not a double oven. I've seen others that were double ovens that had two different heating elements. This one is a single element. So it's a piece of copper wrapping around the three kilohertz or three megahertz of crystal there. And then this is the circuitry to operate the crystal. Now there's two adjustments here. There's this one, which is available from the outside. So this is the one that you can reach in um, through the outside screw and you can get to this adjustment. But there's also adjustment on the inside. So this one probably sets the oscillation really nice to the crystal. And then this one allows you to tweak the frequency a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, quite a bit of stuff, quite a bit of stuff uh, for the oscillator section. There's a, uh, looks like a little inductor there. It's all surface mount. So this thing is fairly new. Yeah, this thing is fairly new. Let's, uh, Let's change lenses. Okay, we've got the other lens on the camera here. We can take a look. Uh, this is the uh, the TIP 100 transistor that heats things up. And this is the uh, this is the circuit board that uh, does the temperature regulation. Op amp and comparator, probably voltage regulator. Let's look at an extra thing there. I don't know what that was for. Looks like the single use board might be a couple different ways to use this board. And then inside this is uh, another, another board. There we go. 
All right, so this board has a uh, additional piece of copper that pulls some of the heat down with some heat heat sh heat uh, sink grease, and it goes here onto the crystal. Uh, so it wraps around the crystal, and then here's the oscillator section. There's an inductor. So this uh, this adjustment here is available to the outside world. You could reach your tool in and, and change the frequency, adjust the frequency of this thing. But this is a second adjustment that's done at the factory that you can't get to. So um, probably sets a good oscillation point for the crystal, and then you can adjust it from there. Take out any uh, irregularities of crystal for uh, capacitance or inductance or stuff like that. But yeah, there you go. There's nothing on the back side of these boards. But. So there was a quick teardown of an isotemp um, oven controlled oscillator, uh, oven crystal controlled oscillator, uh, and uh, all the goodies inside. It's pretty complicated. It's probably why they charge a lot of money for them.